Hey everybody, Farata Live here with a miniature painting video. And today I'm going to be painting these incredible one page rules geckos using my new Army Painter Speed Paints. I printed these on my Anycubic Photon Mono 4K. They've come out brilliantly. Just check out some of the details on these sculpts. They really are quite incredible. Uh, so I'll be painting them today with the new Army Painter Speed Paint range and showing you how I get some amazing effects in very little time. So in the rest of the video, I'm going to be taking you through step by step how I created these amazing finished miniatures. So kicking off the main color for these um, geckos is going to be Plasmatic Bolt. Uh, it's a really nice kind of minty greeny blue color. And I get straight into it using the brush that came with the speed paints. If you've got one of the mega sets or one of the sets, you'll know what I'm talking about here. So straight in with the Plasmatic Bolt. And this is going all over, pretty much all over the lizard flesh that you can see, the Saurian flesh here, uh, trying to be a little bit neat around the elements that are going to be metal or leather. I'm not too worried about the feathers or the claws or eyes. I'll actually be touching those up with white later on. So part of the aim here, just to get a really good kind of fairly thick single coat over the skin. And you can see it really starting to come out there. This single layer of plasmatic bolt is going on really nicely over the top of a zenithal prime. I've done it with spray cans, just with the Vallejo uh, matte black and white primers. I've found you do need a fair bit of white in there, a decent coverage of the zenithal highlight, uh, just to make sure you get the vibrancy out of these speed paints. Otherwise, they can uh, come across a bit subdued and dark if there's not enough white in there. So there you go. That's the skin finished on the first one. Looking good. Speed paint really picking out the texture on the skin, looking great. And next up, switching to pallid bones. So this is a really nice bone color. I've used it on skeletons before. I'll be using it here on the shields and the tips of the spears so that it, you know, it looks like they've been made out of bone. That's what these geckos have been using. So you can see it going on pretty nicely here, just making sure I get the back and front of the shield with a decent coverage. Um, and it's as simple as that really, not too much for the pallid bone to do here, but it's just gonna give it that more natural effect on their weapons rather than a kind of metallic finish. Um, so pretty happy with how that's looking as well. So this is what the finished effect looks like. Just a nice kind of bone effect. I think from a distance, tabletop kind of distance, that's gonna look really good. Next up, dark wood. Um, now this is maybe an extra color I didn't need to use, but I'm using it here just on the uh, shafts of the spears just to pick them out in a slightly darker tone it's actually consistent with how i've used it on some of the other models in this series that i've already painted uh, so that's why i wanted to use the the dark wood here and you can see it is a really blacky brown uh, dark color um, but picks out the spear really nicely that's the only place i'll be using this color on these models now i didn't show you the bottle here but this is hardened leather this is the lighter brown color in the speed paint range i'm using it here for leather straps the belt. Um, some of these geckos have necklaces and I'm just using it for any of the kind of brown leather detailing that you can see going around the neck, just picking out those areas in that lighter brown color. Um, so that's going to be particularly good. They've all got this strapping on their leg as well. So I'm using the hardened leather color to pick that out, as you can see. Um, and it just is a bit more of a, a natural leathery color than the, the dark wood. So I think more appropriate for a, for a lot of these details. Getting in the back of the shield there, the straps. Now this is interesting. I'm working on gold, but I'm going to be using silver and then the sand golem speed paint over the top. So to get the gold effect, I want a really rich gold effect. I'm actually putting down just a normal acrylic silver color. You can see that from the Vallejo model color range, picking out all of the areas in silver first that I want to ultimately be gold. And then, as I said, I'll be going over the top of these silver metallic areas with the sand golem. And I find that gives a really rich, deep golden color. Um, and it also picks out all of the details on this. There's no need for a wash or any highlighting to go on. So you can see me picking up parts of the spear, this little front kind of cod piece that the, uh, the geckos have it looks really great when it's picked out in gold, a bracelet there. So quite a few details on these models that I really do want to have in that gold color. And I'm, I'm mainly going with a gold theme for anything metal for these Saurians in my army. I think it's a really great effect. So now the sand golem. So this is where you can see once that silver's dried, the sand golem just goes over the top, a nice thick layer. And it really gets into all of the cracks and crevices, 
picks out those details so you can get see again the same areas that I've picked out in the silver base color now going over with the sand golem um, and you can see immediately what a lovely color it is it's it's kind of an orangey gold almost really do like it um, I think it looks particularly good on these Saurian models so just going around the bracelet there again all of the same areas there's a little kind of metal band around the tail it's starting to look really good so just the band around the tail to finish you can see me just trying to be pretty precise here i don't want to have to go back over any of the flesh that i've done in plasmatic bolt just picking out now the final elements on the shield you can see those make such a huge difference such a huge difference to how it looks um, and that gold really starting to set the model apart with the plasmatic bolt on the skin tone the pallid bone on the armor and uh, yeah the gold looking great time to touch up some details now we're just with the vallejo white um, normal acrylic paint so going over the feathers on the headdress um, and i'll also be picking out the tongue the claws making sure they are nice and white and bright and then once i've picked all those out i'll also be going in just on the eyes all nice and clean for the next stage. So zealot yellow coming in. I've also got the fire giant orange and the blood red speed paint. And I'm going to be using these to um, get a kind of shading detail on the feathers. So the zealot yellow is going on pretty thick onto the feathers, just getting down a base coat on both sides. And then I'm going in with the fire giant orange. So with the zealot yellow still a little bit wet, I'm just shading in the bottom part of the feathers I'm also just doing some of the headdress band there in the fire giant orange and just kind of trying to gently bleed that back into the yellow trying to create a nice little gradient here you can see that starting to come together I'm also using the fire giant orange for the eyes and the claws so just on the feet there the claws using the orange as well so once I've got all those final details in the last color I'll be using is the blood red just going to be using the blood red first off for the tongue uh, inside the mouth this one's got an open mouth um, and then I'll also be using the blood red just at the base of the feathers just so I get a really nice red orange yellow gradient on the feathers there next we're going to be moving on to the base so I'm just using a very cheap acrylic burnt umber brown paint here I'm just going to be going over the top of the base I'll be using a base ready material on top to give a kind of grass and rock effect but this just makes sure if there's anywhere that shows through underneath it's going to be covered in a nice even brown color so just slapping that on pretty roughly just being careful around the base of the feet although the grass will cover that in the future finishing touches on the base just coming in with some standard acrylic black just the Vallejo model color black just giving a nice neat rim putting it on fairly evenly around the edges I think it just makes them look really quite smart now to move on to the actual basing and for this I'm using Geek Gaming Scenics the base ready tiger hillside uh, sounds a bit odd for some lizards that might live in the jungle but I like the combination of little bits of rock and the grass that's in this one got a really nice effect so slapping the PVA glue on pretty thickly I've got to say trying to get a nice thick layer so that those rock pieces are going to stick as well as the flock for the grass um, so you can't quite see it with my hand but just putting a really really thick layer of the PVA on okay there you go and ready to dip it in just using a spoon to spoon it on make sure I get some of the rocks in there uh, shake off the excess use my finger just around the rim to clean it up and there you go there's the base looking good ready to just let it dry and this is what they look like five geckos ready to go looking really good and a very quick paint job using the army painter speed paints very happy with how they've turned out and as I've just taken you through step by step you can see how I didn't use that many paints it didn't take me very long at all probably four or five hours in total for all of these and here you can see me having used the exact same technique same steps on some geckos with blowpipes so I've got both the blowpipe geckos and the spear and shield geckos ready to go for my Saurian army and I'm really pleased with how these have all worked out hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please hit the like button check out my other miniature painting videos see you soon